what happened to Bad Company. Because he loved the movie Bad Company so much, singer Paul Rogers named his band after it. The band's self-titled album and breakthrough single are both said to have been inspired by the movie. Bad Company's 1974 self-titled first album achieved worldwide success, and the band is regarded as one of the first supergroups of the 1970s. Bad Company consisted of four seasoned musicians, two former members of Free, singer Paul Rogers and drummer Simon Kirk, former Mott the Hoople guitarist Mick Rouse, and King Crimson bassist Boz Burrell. Peter Grant, who at the time also managed Led Zeppelin and would go on to manage Bad Company until Swan Song Records failed in 1982, served as the group's manager. The singles Can't Get Enough, which peaked at number 5 in 1974, and Moving On, which peaked at number 19 in early 1975, both made it into the top 20 charts. The album itself peaked at number 1 on the Billboard 200. Straight Shooter delivered the trio another number one on the pop albums list in 1975, according to Billboard. The album also produced two major singles, The Slower Feel Like Making Love at number 10 and Good Loving Gone Bad at number 36. In order to promote their 1975 record, Run With A Pack, and a new album by Backstreet Crawler, Bad Company and the band of former free member Paul Kossoff Backstreet Crawler planned a British tour. Due to Kossoff's passing on March 19, 1976, the tour that featured both of them as headliners was unable to go on as planned on April 25, 1976. The debut platinum certified album by Bad Company was titled Run With The Pack. The album sold 3 million copies, and it debuted at number 5 on the Billboard list, and produced the smash single, Young Blood, which peaked at number 20 on the Billboard Hot 100. Of the first four albums to chart, 1977's Burning Sky performed the worst. The album's title track, Burning Sky, peaked at number 78 on the Billboard Hot 100. Better than its predecessor, Desolation Angels from 1979 became the group's first top five platinum selling album since 1976's Run With The Pack. Desolation Angels added violins and synthesizers to the band's sound. The album debuted at number 3 on the Billboard charts and had two songs that reached the top 50, Gone 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 at number 56 and Rock and Roll Fantasy at number 13. The band lost interest in performing in big stadiums by the end of the 1970s. Additionally, after Led Zeppelin drummer John Bonham passed away on September 25, 1980, Peter Grant lost interest in the band and management in general. It is said that Boz Burrell, Mick Rouse, and black belt in martial arts Paul Rogers engaged in a pretty one-sided physical battle. With the 1982 release of Rough Diamonds, a three-year break from the studio came to an end. Up until four additional songs were recorded in 1998, this would be the group's sixth and final album in its original incarnation. The album has the lowest sales of any bad company record featuring Paul Rogers as the lead singer. Electric Land, which debuted at number 2 on the newly minted Hot Mainstream Rock Tracks chart, was on the album, which peaked at number 26. They split up following the release of Rough Diamonds. Despite being recognized for their live shows filled the largest stadiums for almost a decade, Bad Company did not release an official live CD of performances during this time period until the 2006 album Live in Albuquerque, 1976. The recordings were recorded by Mick Ralphs, who regularly taped the group's shows, utilizing them as a tool to finally tune their set and performances. There were other bootlegs of live performances by Bad Company from this time period, such as Live in Japan from 1975, and Shooting Star Live at the LA Forum from 1975. Simon Kirk and Mick Rouse decided to collaborate once more on a new project in 1986. However, their record company, Atlantic Records, insisted they return to the Bad Company moniker. However, Paul Rogers had already signed on with the firm, a brand new supergroup. The surviving two members then hired Greg Decker, on keyboards, former Ted Nugent vocalist Brian Howell as the new lead singer, and Steve Price as the new bass player. Compared to Rogers' more bluesy singing style, 
Howls provided the band with a more pop rock sound. 1986's Fame and Fortune was the band's debut album with the new lineup, and it was produced by foreigner producer Keith Olsen. Contrary to earlier Bad Company albums, this one was heavily keyboard driven and reflected the mid 1980s musical style. It was only moderately commercially successful, failing to crack the top 100. The band had hoped for more success in Cuba with this love, but it only managed to reach number 85 on the singles chart. Despite the fact that he did not play on Fame and Fortune, Burrell decided to reunite with the group and had his name mentioned on the album, but he left once more right before the supporting tour. Price then came back. Deckert was removed from the lineup in 1987 after the band made the decision to tone down the keyboards in their sound. They accompanied Deep Purple on tour throughout that year. The band hired producer Terry Thomas to take Olsen's position for the next Howl era album, 1988's Dangerous Age, who got rid of most of the keyboards and brought the band back to a guitar-driven sound. Along with writing the majority of the songs with the band, Thomas also contributed a little amount of keyboards, rhythm guitar, and backing vocals. With the AOR successes No Smoke Without a Fire, One Night, and Shake It Up, Dangerous Age performed better than its predecessor. The album reached the top 60 and earned gold status. Larry Oakes on keyboards and guitar, who had also briefly performed with Foreigner, joined the band for the Dangerous Age tour. Price and Oakes left at the conclusion of the tour. The band started looking for a replacement for Hal during the Dangerous Age tour, during which they traveled apart from him since they could no longer stand his behavior. Hal tried to start a solo career, but was unsuccessful in getting a record deal. Eventually, the band was forced to let him return due to pressure from outside forces to create a new album. The band's subsequent album, 1990's Holy Water, which Thomas also produced, was a huge commercial and critical success, reaching the top 40 and earning platinum certification by selling more than 1 million copies. The band's debut album on Atco Records, a division of Atlantic, was titled Holy Water. Three singles from the album were released. If You Needed Somebody, which reached number 16, Holy Water, which reached number 89, and Walk Through the Fire, which reached number 28. In addition, Holy Water spent two weeks at number one on the AOR charts, with If You Need Somebody coming in at number two. Five tracks from the album made the AOR charts in all, and also generated a number of popular music videos. For the CD, Felix Krisch provided the bass and Paul Colin was enlisted for the live performances. Mick Ralphs, who was taking care of personal and family problems, set out for most of the Holy Water tour, although he did perform on the album. On stage and in the videos, Ralphs was replaced by former Crawler guitarist Jeffrey Whitehorn. Later on the tour, Ralphs came back, and Whitehorn joined Pro Call Harem, where he continues to perform today. Dave Bucket Colwell, a former guitarist for ASAP, also joined at this time as a second guitarist. The tour's successful dates frequently had Damn Yankees as co-headliners. The tour was one of the most financially successful in 1991, a year in which many other rock groups experienced a decline in concert attendance as a result of rising ticket prices and the global economic crisis. Here Comes Trouble, the last studio album released during the How era, had the top 40 hits How About That, which reached number 38, and This Could Be the One, which reached number 87. Despite the album's success, the formula was becoming tired. Rick Wills, a former foreigner, Roxy Music, and Small Faces bassist, joined the group before the Here Comes Trouble tour, and Colwell, a Ralph's protege, was now a full-time member. During the Here Comes Trouble tour, the band recorded a live album called What You Hear Is What You Get, The Best of Bad Company. The 1993 CD, which included live renditions of popular songs from the band's Rodgers and Howe eras, did not do well commercially. In 1994, Hal left the group. For the recording of these four new songs, Rogers and the other three original members got back together in the studio. Even though the reunion was brief, it resulted in Hey Hey, a top 20 AOR success and Hammer of Love, which reached number 23. 
The brand new songs were included on the original Bad Company anthology, a 1999 compilation album that barely peaked at position number 89 on the charts. In 2001, Paul Rogers reunited with Mick Rouse and Boz Burrell for a tour that included Billy Squire and Styx. The song Joe Fabulous, which peaked at number one the radio in the top 20 on mainstream rock radio in its debut week, was included on the band's live album and DVD, Merchants of Cool. After the 2002 tour, Bad Company stopped performing as Rogers focused on his solo endeavors. Numerous audio bootlegs as well as a handful in video format are available for almost every performance of the 2005 and 2006 tours. On August 8, 2008, Bad Company played a one-time show at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Hollywood, Florida. It was initially intended for Bad Company to be a part of a two-night event when the band's original lineup was first revealed on July 2, 2008. During the summer of 2009, Paul Rogers, Mick Ralphs, and Simon Kirk once again shared the stage and played 10 concerts across the country. Extended Versions, a low-cost live album from the group's 2010 UK tour, was released in March 2011. The bassist for Rogers' solo band, Todd Ronning, joined second guitarist Howard Leese on stage. Former lead singer Brian Howell died on May 6, 2020 at age 66. Fourteen years before that, Boz Burrell suddenly died of a heart attack during rehearsals on September 21, 2006. And that's what happened to Bad Company. Thank you for watching and like and subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know, give me some of your favorite Bad Company songs and give me some facts that I failed to mention. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.